Can you actually see my face anywhere? No, we were all just seeing how good that was. <laughs> okay. Okay, here we go. Thank you. It's five o'clock and we welcome you all to council this week. It's uh, great to have everybody here and, and people in the audience and uh, Council Herbert is still far away, but he, we can still hear him. So it works. And uh, this is National Volunteer Week. So we wanted to recognize that and say what a beautiful day it was outside today. And we'll ask the members of council, including those very far away, is there any disclosures of interest? Seeing none, we'll move to minutes. Your Worship, I have a motion that the minutes of the meetings held on April the 8th, 2024 be confirmed. Moved by Councillor Peters, seconded by Councillor McCauley. Questions or comments on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor. Any opposed? Carried. Council will now resolve itself into Committee of the Whole to deal with the following business. First committee this evening is Strategic Direction and Development. First item relates to proposed easement for 10 Highbury Avenue. I have a motion that report PD 1224 regarding a proposed easement in favor of the property known as 10 Highbury Avenue be received for information. And further, the council direct that a bylaw be prepared to enter into an easement agreement over certain city owned lands between Highbury Avenue and 10 Highbury Avenue. Moved by Councillor Wookie, second by Councillor Gibson. Questions or comments on the report? Seeing none, all those in favor then. Any opposed? That's carried. Your Worship, unless there's any further items from the members, we'll now move into community engagement and services. First item relates to the Ontario Works 2023 program review. I have a motion that report SESS 824 relating to the Ontario Works 2023 program review be received for information. Moved by Councillor Baldwin Sands. Seconded by Councillor Wookie. Questions or comments? Councillor Clark. Question. Okay, I'll get you next, Councillor Herbert. Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. I'm just wondering if we have any data on how long people are typically on OW, whether or not uh, whether or not we can drill down and get that kind of information. Um, right. th thank you for the question. Um, the I'd, I could look up the number to be sure, but we, we have a lot of people that move off very quickly and we have some other people that stay on longer. So I could I could send you the numbers, but it, it really varies. Um, we have our turnover. We pretty much turn over a caseload every year. Um, so that means that we have a lot of people coming and going at the same time. Um, it's people that take longer, the people that have medical issues and that don't have family doctors and we have to get them connected to doctors, get the paperwork oh. filled out. Um, if they're applying for ODSP, that can take several months as well. So in those circumstances, it takes quite a bit longer. And supplementary? Councilor Herbert, you're next. Supplementary? Oh, sorry. Councillor Clark has one more question, then you, Jim. Thanks. Um, Thank you. I know there'll be a time lag, but with the number of uh, businesses that have uh, that are hiring right now, well, I was kind of surprised to see that the numbers were, you were anticipating the numbers were going to go up for next year. Uh, in the number of case caseloads, do you think um, that will rectify itself over over time because of uh, the job market? I think that's part of it. I think COVID wasn't a friend to people. A lot of people didn't obtain medical information or um, see a family doctor. They didn't get um, mental health or addiction um, services. So there's a lot of problems out there. Domestic violence increased greatly as well. Um, and we know there's issues with um, human trafficking and so there's lots of issues that are happening that um, you know so those those folks are going to struggle it's not really because that they aren't maybe able to get work some of them it's just because they're not in a position at this time so that that's one reason why um, we do have as far as we had other piece of people that terminated last year 29 just over 29 percent terminated because of employment so and that's about eight percent higher than the provincial average so we've done well um, making sure that we are helping people and to move towards employment. Thank you, Council Herbert. Thank you, Worship. Uh, I'll direct it to Joanne there. Uh, first of all, my some reason I'm getting muted by the console, but I'm okay right now. So, so my question is, 
I noticed in uh, you go from 1,297 cases to 1,407 and then 1,500. And I'm going to assume you're overworked right now. How will you handle all these increased cases? Are you planning to add more staff? Or is it just something they're going to take in an increased work uh, caseload? That's my question. At this point, we have some vacancies, so we're going to fill up all the vacancies that we have, and then we're going to have to determine past set, um, you know, to see what, what's going to happen if we can maintain the caseload. Right now, we there's some um, optional things that um, we do annual file reviews, and we can wait and do that because they're actually, we could do them biannually. So there's some things we're holding back on because of the staffing shortage. But once we get people on board, then we'll get back up to speed, and we'll just have to see... Um, after that. So a follow-up question, Your Worship. Go ahead. Uh, would you have put that into your budget for this upcoming year for, for 24 for any increase or is it, are you just staying status quo? We're just, just staying concerned with... about the staffing. That was all. Yeah. Thank you. We're just, we're just status quo with the positions that we have in our budget and we're just going to re, we, um, some of those positions are vacant. So we're going to fill all the available positions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councillor Peters. Thanks, Your Worship. Um, sort of a question, I guess, relating to the person center supports. Um, what is the threshold? So if I'm a single individual, I can I receive $733. Um, one of the one of the important things of Ontario Works is the ability to have some benefits mm -hmm. covered uh, for you: dental, drug, uh, eyeglass. So, if I'm working, how much money can I still earn? To because I might need those supports. I don't want to lose that, but I want to work. How much money can I earn before the government starts to to claw it back? And I'm just curious what that scenario would be on the ODSP side as well. Sure, if someone is working on OW, the first 200, we don't consider as income, they need to report it to us, but we don't consider as income. And then it's 50% of anything after that. So that allows them to keep the keep a certain percent of their income. The other thing with it as well is if someone leaves for employment and um, if they have don't have drug coverage where they're going to, which is a lot of cases there isn't benefits, uh, we can help for the first three months till the person gets on benefits that they're available. If they have high in, high costs for drug costs, we can continue indefinitely um, benefits, the health benefits. So basically we look at what their earnings are and we look at how much their drug costs are. And if it's if they're not ahead by working, then we can continue to provide medication. I had a question, Jan, if it's okay. I know you and I have had this conversation and the number is growing for OW over the next two years. Mm -hmm. But you mentioned in, in one of your answers to, to uh, Councillor Clark that there's, there's still a number of people who would be considered appropriate for ODSP, but yet can't do that swing over. Their benefits are a little better at ODSP mm -hmm. and so is the negative from the clawback piece. Yes. What do we what what do we need to do in order to be able to transfer some of the people who are currently on OW in our community to a more a, a better system of Ontario Disability Support Program? Right, and it might be ODSP, and it could also be Canada Pension Plan Disability too. Yes, it could, you're right. It could well. be the other yeah. disability. Yes. The, the, the challenge is finding family doctors and getting people connected to, to medical. Once they get connected, they can often get, get to referrals and get specialists that they see. Most family doctors aren't going to meet you the first time or the second time and say that you have a permanent disability because right. they don't know you yet and they haven't went sent you to different medical professionals to see like if, if a treatment will help. So sometimes that takes time. Um, it's also costly. So if somebody has, um, if we need to get a psychological assessment done, um, they're about $2,600 um, to get one done. So the costs are really expensive. So that's the other reason. And the second question was, we had some meetings today with some fairly large employers in 2025. They sure could use 1,500 people as employees in our community. And so rather than, um, is, do we have a working plan on the on the, on the the moving people from OW towards the workforce Sorry. for new employers coming to our community? 
So what we do with every client when they apply for assistance is we do what's called an action plan. And we also do what's called a common assessment. And it asks, um, takes about an hour, asks multiple questions about their situation to find out what it is that they need. Um, and if depending on what that circumstances are, there's three options. We could either um, continue to work with them to help them if it's they need connections to medical. Okay. We might refer them for employment services as well. They're looking at other things as well, because you can do things concurrently. Right. Or we might say that, nope, they're great, they're good to go. Um, and they're at a point that they're ready to start preparing for look for employment. So it might be helping with a resume, doing interview things, um, and then the employment agencies will work with them to continue them off on towards employment. Super, okay, thank you. Further questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor of the report. Any opposed, carried. Your Worship, unless there are any further items for this committee, we'll now move to infrastructure and civic operations. First item relates to the Yarmouth Yard Earthworks and Servicing Phase 1 Tender Award. I have a motion that report ID 1624 relating to Yarmouth Yard Earthworks and Servicing Phase 1 Tender Award be received for information. And further, the Council award the Yarmouth Yard's Earthworks and Servicing Phase 1 to Blue Con Construction in the amount of $15,198,500, excluding HST. Moved by Councillor Wookie, seconded by Councillor Kohler. Questions or comments on the report? Councillor Peters. Thanks, Your Worship. Um, it's going to be a lot of activity going on out there. You've got this project that we're about to award. We have Highbury that we have awarded. We awarded the future bypass and the rail bridge going in. Plus, there'll be construction at some point. You're confident that everyone can play well together in the sandbox and uh, uh, we can make all these things happen concurrently. <laughs> Mr. Lawrence, will there be kumbaya coming from the uh, the construction sites? I'm not sure about that, but um, we do have a plan. So we call it a staging plan. And it basically goes year by year to create uh, either time or space separation between the pieces. Um, it's a bit of a logic puzzle to get uh, to put together because so sometimes one contract has to happen before another. Um, but the, the thing that we avoid is crossing one project over another. So each has an independent access. Uh, it's definitely something to watch out for. If we don't do it well, then the Ministry of Labor will say that um, uh, the city will be deemed the constructor in that case. Uh, so we don't want that to happen. We want each contractor to be the constructor on their proper site. Uh, so we spend a lot of time on it. Um, we will also, uh, next month, we're doing our first uh, meeting with all the other parties. So PowerCo is the other big player in this, right? PowerCo has um, 10, uh, 15 different projects going out at the same time as this. Uh, and, and we'll organize, we'll communicate to make sure that we don't cross over or have any conflicts. Okay. Councillor Herbert, did I see you a hand from you? No. Councillor Clark. It's kind of an indirect question, but the map shows. Um, Someone was asking, and, and it's a perfect time to get you to confirm, are all the roads uh, that are that we see in red and, and um, you know, will they all be public thoroughfares or will it be any of these roads private uh, to the complex? Mr. Lawrence? Thanks, yeah. So um, everything on the outside uh, will be public. So uh, PowerCo Parkway up to the property line, um, Electric Avenue, would be public road. South Edge, where all the way across to Yarmouth Center will be a public road. Uh, so everything except uh, the point where it crosses over onto the Power Co parcel, and they have three different entrances. And then past that point, they have some internal roads, and those are not public. So there, there'll be basically a gate at the three entrances, and, and there'll be no public traffic past the gate. But all the other roads are, are open. Okay, further questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor. Any opposed? Carried. Next item relates to the Housing <clears throat> Enabling Water Systems Fund. I have a motion that report ES 2024 relating to a Housing Enabling Water Systems Fund application be received for information. And further, the council directs staff to prepare an application to the Housing Enabling Water Systems Fund in support of the Northwest Area One expansion project. 
excuse me, for an estimated total eligible grant value of up to 35 million. Moved by Councillor McCauley, second by Councillor Clark. Questions or comments? Councillor Herbert, did I see your hand? Nope. Okay. Anybody else's? Okay. Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Carrie? Next item relates to the Investing in Canada Infrastructure Program relating to transfer payment agreement amendment and transit vehicle procurement. I have a motion that report ES2124 relating to the Investing in Canada Infrastructure Program transfer payment agreement amendment and transfer vehicle procurement, transit vehicle procurement be received for information. And further, council authorize the mayor and clerk to sign and execute the uh, ICIP transit TPA amending agreement number one as attached to report ES2124. And further, the council authorize the amount of $560,000 from the provincial gas tax reserve for the replacement of two transit buses through the Metrolinx joint transfer contract, transit contract. Moved by Councillor Kohler, seconded by Councillor Gibson. Questions or comments? Councillor Wookie. Thanks, Your Worship. My question is, um, of course, there's no, there's no free lunch in this world. And um, what would we normally be putting that money towards? What does the gas tax money, is it just goes into a basic reserve? Is just a flow through to our operating budget? So I just would like to know kind of how that works and where it's coming from, thanks. Mr. Dillerbeck. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, and through to Councillor Wookie. Um, in the financial impact section, it kind of is, explains a little bit where the provincial gas tax has been going historically. So a portion of it has been going into uh, the provincial gas tax reserve for the purpose of re plus re replacements. And another portion has been going to help offset some of the transit operating budget. Thank you. Further questions? Kevin, we've been, we, we know that as we move forward on strategic planning, you and I have had some discussions about we'll need to look further at transit. And luckily this week was the first week of our London to St. Thomas transit. And so it's, it's so far been going very well. Um, in, in a, in a previous life, it seems, but it wasn't that long ago, the, both the federal and provincial government gave us money for transit for new buses and a bunch of bus shelters and as we went to our new routes. Um, I, I understand the use of the, of the Ontario uh, gas tax because it is all about transit also. So this is either one or the other, but we have an uh, um, amount of money sitting in reserve to buy electric buses. That's the intent when we can find a Canadian manufacturer of electric buses that can satisfy our fleet. Our fleet. Um, could we have taken this money from that or is that better left alone for that one purpose that it was given to us for? Uh, through your worship to council, um, at the time of drafting the budget, we were not aware that this contract would be extended, the ICIP transit funding mm. that you're referring to for the purchase of electric vehicle buses. Um, and so at that time, uh, we had not contemplated using that fund. Right. Um, that funding source is for, as you mentioned, some of the transit hub upgrades and some of the shelters that were installed, some technology um, as well for our transit system. And so um, table one there kind of gives you an idea of where we are in that overall project. Right. Um, and so uh, basically with the estimate of the solar panel installation on Joe uh, Arena and the tra uh, traffic signal equipment, uh, pieces we have kind of earmarked how much those are anticipated to cost that leaves us with about 1.6 uh, yeah. for electric bus purchasing the advantage of this tpa amending agreement is that it gives us more time for that uh, right. industry to develop a little bit more so um, that's great the other piece is that metro Lynx is going through a procurement initiative a joint procurement initiative for battery electric buses Right. which is also good because it affords us the time, the opportunity to leverage those economies as well. So um, rather than moving forward in isolation, um, right. we've got these four older buses. It makes sense from our perspective 
to move forward with replacing these 2017 buses over the next couple of years, and then look to replace quite, I know this sounds crazy, but the 2023s will be looking to replace with battery electric buses in the future already. Right. So um, time flies by pretty fast. Um, and I guess just to help the folks at home and 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 us, if we if we need it, the Metrolink's contract is us pooling together with other communities to find great deals on things we all need to use. In this case, Metrolink's is about busing and transportation. So right? yes, you were. So we're getting correct. a better deal because we're using we're using the Metrolink's uh, buying power to do it. Economies of scale. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Further questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Carried. Unless the members have any further items for this committee, we'll now move into corporate governance and administration. First item relates to a City of St. Thomas Memorandum of Understanding with the YMCA. I have a motion that report PRF 1624 relating to a Memorandum of Understanding between the YMCA of Southwestern Ontario and the City of St. Thomas be received for information and for the council direct administration to prepare the associated bylaw and for the council authorized mayor clerk to execute the memorandum of understanding with the YMCA of Southwestern Ontario. Moved by Councillor Wookie, second by Councillor Clark. Questions or comments? Councillor Gibson, then Councillor uh, Clark. Uh, just one question, your uh, worship, and thank you. I'm just finding, just wondering at the funding, if they, um, if they have to use it all in one year or do they use it until it's gone? And if it has to be used within the year and it's not used, where does it go from there? Thank you. Thank Mr. you, Mr. Bray. Thank it's you, all Mayor. up to you. Thank you, Mayor Preston. Uh, through you to Councillor Gibson, it doesn't have to be used in the calendar year at our discretion. Uh, it would roll over and the remaining funds would go. Keep going. Back into a reserve. Councillor Clark. Thank you. I was just wondering if we've uh, worked out the details in terms of the three categories, the uh, aquafit swim lessons or public uh, swims, um, how, how much of the 100,000 has been allotted to each of those programs? I, I would just suggest that uh, swim lessons for kids is, I hope, will be a priority, but I didn't know if it, if uh, since it's a pilot project, whether those details will be worked out kind of month by month as we see what people prefer. Thank you, Mayor Preston. Yeah, your latter is correct. We're meeting with the Y on a regular basis, staff are. So we're going at it uh, month by month. As swimming lessons become available, we will dedicate funds to that. Um, things like uh, the passes will always be available. I think this will give us as we roll into it, a uh, good idea of where the public interest is too, because we're not sure right now. Further questions or comments? Mr. Bray, do you see this an ongoing? I know this is a, a, a one-year <clears throat> piece here, but is it something in your mind that we need to have as an agreement with the Y going on going forward? Uh, thanks, Mayor Preston. Um, I think it's a little premature. I know they have similar uh, arrangements with other municipalities, but what I'm personally interested in is just to see how the citizens of St. Thomas uh, take this up to enjoy some aquatic programs that typically people may not be able to afford. Good plan. Further questions or comments? Councillor Wookie? Thanks, Worship. Oh, Mr. Bray, don't get, don't go away. Um, how are we going to get the word out to people? Is this going to be through schools or how, how will people know about the program and how much it costs and what's available. Thanks very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Mayor Preston. Uh, both teams, the, uh, the Y and the municipal team, were working on independent together, but uh, they're doing their advertising separately. So that'll be vetted um, through the city manager's office uh, before it's released. So we haven't reached out to schools yet. That is one of them, but we're, we're looking at um, social media right now. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, I think it'd be great to get this in uh, the the two school yeah. boards, and, and maybe even we target a certain age group, you know, to learn learn to swim, and get that out to all the all the students in that grade. Thanks. I will certainly pass that along. Thank you. Great. 
Question? Yes, Councillor Herbert, go ahead. Thank, thank you. Through to Jeff Bray, thank you. Uh, I notice in the report it says when the JC pool is not open, this is when this program is available. So how many months is, is a JC pro, uh, pool not open? Uh, thank you, Mayor Preston. July and August. Oh, for just full, thank you. JC pool is only open in July and August. Sorry, I kind of answered in reverse. Right. And so- That's okay, thank you, I got it. Yep. We would be doing our programming there using JC pool, but the other 10 months of the year, we're, we're participating with the Y? That is correct. Okay. okay. Further questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Carried? Your Worship, unless the members have any further items for this committee, Council will now reconvene into regular session. I have a motion that the recommendations, directions, and actions of Council and Committee of the Whole, in, as recorded in the minutes of this date, be confirmed, ratified, and adopted. Moved by Councillor baldwin Sands, seconded by Councillor Gibson. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Carried. We now move into petitions and communications. First item is a request for a proclamation and flag raising from Victim Services Algon. I have a motion that Council of the City of St. Thomas proclaim May 12th to 18th, 2024 as Victims and Survivors of Crime Week in the City of St. Thomas, and further that the Victim Services Algon flag be flown at City Hall from May 13th to 20th, 2024, and further that a flag raising ceremony be held at City Hall on May 13th, 2024. Moved by Councillor Wookie, seconded by Councillor McCauley. Questions or comments on the uh, proclamation? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Gary? Yes. Uh, next item is a request for a declaration uh, relating to intimate partner violence. A uh, letter has been received requesting that council declare intimate partner violence as an epidemic in the city of St. Thomas. I do have a motion that council of the city of St. Thomas declare intimate partner violence an epidemic in the city of St. Thomas. Moved by Councillor Bowen-Sand, seconded by Councillor McCauley. Questions or comments? I'll go to Councillor Baldwin-Sand, then Councillor Peters. Thank you. We did receive as members of council a letter of support from the chief of police earlier today. And I wish that to be noted as well. And I also understand in the uh, very detailed letter that we received this afternoon from the chief that he talked about in that letter about what they were doing in the 2023 to 2026 strategic plan. And also recognizing further that there is no question that the post pandemic environment has exacerbated socioeconomic impacts that have required responses from a complex consortium of health, social and justice sector professionals. So with the rise in both violent and nonviolent crimes in 2022, the St. Thomas Public uh, Police Services has actioned a number of community driven initiatives and that we believe um, will be effective in producing positive outcomes for local public safety. So I would like to thank the chief for sending that letter to all members of council and giving his full support to this initiative. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Peters. Uh, thanks, Your Worship. I noted with interest last week, the Ontario legislature passed a very similar type of resolution and it was unanimously supported. I think one of the things I'd like to hear from the chief on is what sort of advocacy work we can do as a council. Who do we need to lobby on some of these things? Because as this issue, like a lot of other issues that we deal with at the municipal level, um, we can only do so much. And um, I, I think it would be good to know from Chief Roskamp and, and others in the community, um, victims of against violent services, et cetera, of what we can do collectively to uh, help advocate. Well, thank you, uh, Councillor Peters. I do, true watched the legislature in Toronto last year, last week, working on this on this proposal. Had the conversation with the police chief and Councillor McCauley, who also sits on the police board. Uh, uh, the police chief referred a lot in his letter to us today about the support of this 
declaration, but also in steps being taken. But this is as much an awareness piece as it is a, a policing steps piece. So we're doing part of that tonight by talking about it here tonight and in other, other instances where we can have the conversation. A number of other cities have declared this as an epidemic position and uh, we'll be joining them. Uh, but you're right. The more conversation we can have about in, intimate partner violence, the, the more awareness is out there and the more steps can be taken to help prevent. Further questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? That's passed unanimously. Next item is a copy of a resolution addressed to the Premier from the City of Kitchener regarding an extension to review the heritage value and interest of non-designated listed properties on municipal heritage registers. Next item, uh, final item under petitions is uh, notice received from the city and from Paradigm Transportation Solutions of a project to refresh the City of St. Thomas Transportation Master Plan. Further information is available on the city's website under the heading Transportation Master Plan Refresh 2024. Hey, Your Worship, unless there are any items from the members under petitions, we'll now move into unfinished business of council. Okay. Your Worship, seeing no items under unfinished business, we'll now move into new business of council. Any items under new business? If I could simply under the under the under this category, talk about what a great weekend it is, was at the home show. And I know all, all of you joined us at at some point, and uh, so did thousands of people from St. Thomas come tell us uh, um, what we've been working on and, and what they feel and, and how well that works. And uh, wanted to share uh, my thanks to all of council and all of the uh, uh, staff that were also working the St. Thomas booth and other booths at the uh, at the home show this weekend to really get that face-to-face -face feeling about what's going on in our community and and the conversation from from the citizens so thank you all for for being there this weekend and helping with it any other new business away we go thank you worship we now move into bylaws i have a motion that leave be granted to bring in the bylaws moved by councillor clark second by councillor peters questions or comments Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Carried. I have a motion by Councillor Clark, seconded by Councillor Peters, that the bylaws be now read a first time, referred to Council and Committee of the Whole, and read a second time. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Carried. First bylaw, please. First bylaw is a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the Council meeting held on April 15th, 2024. Questions or comments? Seeing none. All those in favor? Item carries. Second bylaw, please. Bylaw number two is a bylaw to exempt Railway City Brewing Company located at 130 Edwards Street uh, under the Retail Business Holidays Act to permit the brewery and associated retail store to be opened on Good Friday and Easter Sunday. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Item carries. Third bylaw, please. Third bylaw is a bylaw to exempt Caps Off Brewing Company located at 168 Curtis Street, Unit C, uh, as well under the Retail Business Holidays Act to permit the brewery and associated retail store to be opened on Good Friday and Easter Sunday. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Item carries. Next item, please. Fourth bylaw is a bylaw to authorize Mayor Clerk to execute and affix the seal of corporation to a certain agreement between the city and 13359069 Canada Inc. This relates to a residential grant agreement under the Community Improvement Program for the property at 151 Wellington Street. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? That item carries. Next item, please. Fifth bylaw is a bylaw to amend bylaw 187-2014, which is a bylaw to designate 225 Wellington Street in the city of St. Thomas as a property of cultural value or interest. Uh, this particular bylaw is to amend the legal description, uh, basically the westerly portion of the lands to be purchased for redevelopment are to be excluded from the designation bylaw similar to the bylaw change for Waterworks Park to allow redevelopment along South Edgeware Road uh, for Elgin Hospice. 
Questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? That item carries. Next item, please. Six bylaws uh, is a bylaw to authorize the mayor clerk to execute and affix the seal of the corporation to a certain memorandum of understanding between the city and the YMCA of Southwestern Ontario. This relates to the aquatic program subsidy. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? That item carries. Next item, please. Seventh and final bylaw is a bylaw to authorize the mayor and clerk to execute and affix the seal of the corporation to a certain agreement between the city and His Majesty the King in right of the province of Ontario as represented by the Minister of Transportation. This relates to the Investing in Canada Infrastructure Program for the Transfer Payment Amending Agreement. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favour? That item carries. Your Worship, I rise and report the successful passing of the seven bylaws. Great. I have a motion by Councillor Clark, seconded by Councillor Peters, that the report of Council and Committee of the Whole on the seven bylaws be received and adopted. The same be read a third time, engrossed, signed by the Mayor and Clerk, sealed and numbered. Questions or comments? Seeing that, all those in favour? Any opposed? Carried. No public notices or notices of motion this evening, Your Worship. There is a need to move into closed session. I have a motion that this meeting be closed to deal with the position, plan, procedure, criteria, or instruction to be applied to any negotiations carried on or to be carried on by or on behalf of the municipality. Herbert. Move by Baldwin Sands, seconded by Councillor Herbert. Well, a couple of items before we vote on the on the going into closed session as I as I, I, I want to do usually to tell people we're going to go into close now. And then we have a public meeting at six o'clock. So those that would like to be at the public meeting will have to be back on or here at six o'clock. But I also wanted to uh, point out that this may be one of the last times we have our city manager with us tonight. Um, it's been a um, an excellent run with uh, with Sandra here as our city manager, CAO. And I know that the whole city will would like to say thank you. Um, but they, since they couldn't all fit in the gallery tonight, we decided we would just say it here. Um, we, um, we, Sandra's not going. We're, we'll still know where to find her and still know where to, to find a friend when we need one. But uh, the city uh, is forever grateful for the work that she's been able to do for us here. Speech. Okay, on her behalf, I'll say thank you to you all and, and what a great job the mayor's done during her whole role. Uh, all right, I, I, sorry, <laughs> through you, your words, but I need to stop that. Um. <laughs> thank you. I am, I, I, I still tear up a little, but I know that uh, our friendship will last a lot longer than the, uh, than the uh, melancholy piece of missing her. So on that note, we will uh, move into closed session. If, it, if the council doesn't mind, we could move to 304, handle our closed session, and then come back into the, into the council room at six o'clock for the public meeting. If that's okay with council, then is that all right with you, Madam Clerk? Can we do that? All right, then all in favor. So your worship, what, what do I do? Just Sign what do you do? Under well, you get in your car and no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, they're leaving too. You you can wait for if, if you want to wait for the public meeting, you can, or you you're more than welcome. I'm sorry, we're going to give you a couple minutes worth of, of downtime. All right, back to you, Councillor Herbert. You get your I yep. think there's a, there's there's a closed session um, Zoom that you're supposed to sign into. I will do that. Thank you. I, Thank I you. struggled in the beginning, but I'll try it again. Thank you. Okay. Well, you, I, I'm, I'm sorry for your struggles. We'll see you on the other side.